Hello and welcome to I Thought You'd Like to Know. I am Mary Kleska and I am here today with um, a very beautiful guest. Her name is Andrea Chifloni. <laughs> I know I didn't say that right. Chifloni? <laughs> you can correct me. <laughs> Oh, it's ciamplone, like a spaghetti. Ciamplone. <laughs> With a little Italian. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A lot of it. <laughs> and she is such an interesting guest for us to have today. She is an incredible opera singer. She has a voice <laughs> that reminds you of heaven <laughs> and the angels. <laughs> and um, she has such a special kind of message and mission to share with us today. And I'm really excited to be able to um, share her with all of our, our, our audience. So can we start with a prayer? I'll start with us with a prayer and then maybe you can share a little just about who you are. Okay. Sure. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Sweet Jesus, we thank you for this time together. And we ask for your intercession to be with us, to send the Holy Spirit, to help us to ask the questions and give the answers that you want to share with the particular listeners that you bring to us today and every day afterwards that listen to this. And Blessed Mother, you who shared such a beautiful friendship with your cousin Elizabeth, we ask your intercession for our conversation, that it may bring the same praise and glory to God that the two of you did in your conversation and the visitation. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So thank you for being with us. I'm so excited and intrigued by your life. <laughs> you know, the more I started to learn about you, the more I thought, wow, this is really what a, your life is really a testament to the glory of God. Um, oh. But would you share just at the beginning, a little bit of your history? Tell us about your family, where you're from, and, and maybe, you know, the beginnings of your life with singing. I always think it's interesting to go back to the beginning, you know? <laughs> well, let's see. Thanks for that <laughs> beautiful introduction. I didn't think my life was that interesting sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> I... Um, I come from a pretty musical family, uh, mm -hmm. music, piano, accordion, wow. things. these were the sounds that you heard in our household. Um, my mother had a music business, my father, a music teacher, so a lot of music in the line, and each of my siblings play instruments, really? and yeah, so my brother's, you know, an engineer, my sister plays the piano, she, uh, she's in a, a different field of work, uh, right. she's helping protect our society, um, she's okay. a officer, so oh, um, we all have music as a part of our life in different ways, so right. it's beautiful, um, but yeah, so I was uh, raised in a Catholic family, <laughs> and a part a lot of, lot of arts along the way, uh -huh. and I fell in love with singing. Um, you know, I played violin, piano, did dancing, and by the time I was 17, 18, I said, I want to do this as a career. Really? So, yeah, that was kind of the, uh, the moment of, I'm going to just jump in, go to New York, and oh, <laughs> really? see what happens. Wow. Yeah. You were yeah, young when you went. <laughs> What's that? You were so young. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So I did go to college, um, uh -huh. you know, got my bachelor of music at um, a college in Minnesota, where I'm originally from. Okay. And then I went to an opera company after that, had my first apprenticeship. I was one of the youngest singers at the time in that opera company. So it was a really... It was a really big learning curve for me, you know, it's like, here I am, this young singer, and I'm looking at all these amazing, glorious voices, listening to them and learning from my colleagues. And I think that experience just really made me want to jump into the, the Big Apple. So. Wow. Did you always want to do opera? 
What drew you to opera as opposed to a different form of music? Well, it's interesting. I've had a pretty eclectic career. So even uh -huh. now, it's like I, I guess I would call myself like a classical crossover singer. Okay. Um, most of <laughs> And on the concert stages, um, the most recent being at Carnegie Hall. Um, I've also had really fun uh, experimentation and different things with the voice, uh, anything from jazz to oh, really? pop, uh, gospel. I absolutely love singing, <laughs> sacred music, of course, you know, uh, love Ave Maria. And, right. <laughs> Yes, can never get old of, of Ave Maria. I no. just love that beautiful <laughs> song. Um, but yeah, it's been really varied. You know, I sang at an NFL game a couple years I back. I saw that, and it's incredible <laughs> because that it's almost like an opera hall. Like the way you sang was so beautiful. <laughs> it just like for one moment took everyone back to you know, something higher than just a football game, <laughs> you know? I said that because I was reflecting on that just a couple hours ago, but different uh -huh. performances I'm part of, and it really does feel like a sacred moment, especially when you're singing the anthem, you know? Right. It's uh, a moment where you've got, at least for the NFL game, it was about 50,000 in the stadium, and everyone's singing, Right. Everyone's standing, they're, they're raising their voice in love for their country right. and love for their men and, you know, love for their family or whoever's there in that moment. And it just so happened that at that particular performance, there were a lot of veterans in oh. the, in, in the audience, you know, the arena. And right. so I, yeah, I was able to meet up with them afterwards and listen to a couple of their stories of their their loved ones who were uh, abroad or serving in, a, in the military. And it just, it just makes me feel as a performer, very grateful to be even having the opportunity to use my voice in whatever way possible to bring beauty or hopefully. Or to honor <laughs> them. Right. But, uh, you know what I mean? That, that artists yeah. are stewards. Duty, right right so no, totally. um yeah so it, it is a sacred moment i think when whenever whenever any performance is taking place in, in theater in an arena in a small coffee shop and right. wherever it is i've i've equally enjoyed singing uh with homeless people in new york new york city um as i have had singing in an arena so right. it's all it's all great. You, you know, know, and music is a way to unite people. It's like what you're saying, you know, it, it really can unite and it makes, it, it makes people kind of one, it kind of levels the playing field in a way, you know? Um, and it's really beautiful to think of, like, think of the different sort of people that were in that arena or at, at, or at a given performance. And yet they're all united together through your voice. You know, even if yeah. you're singing along, you know, guiding them then. And it's it's a really beautiful thing to think about, you know, the unitive part of music. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because that reminded me of this one particular moment I had at a concert. It was a Sing for Wellness concert. Uh -huh. um, we were promoting the Sing for Wellness program. And uh, really, Sing for Wellness is all about lifting people's moods. Uh -huh. And really, the, the medicinal quality behind singing, right? Right. right. Um, and at one point in the concert, you know, I was going up to different people and putting the mic in front of them, very impromptu. We were doing a past free idea where person would sing a line of text that they created and then we would move on to the next person and they would add to the story with their voice and their their song style and I came up to one gentleman who was pretty fearful in that moment and I had one of those kind of fearful moments in myself as the right. host of the show like, right okay guys getting red in the face and right. probably palms and what do I do right right so immediately 
just kind of got this idea, like, let's start clapping for him. Right. So I get the audience going. I'm like, let's right. clap for him. Let's encourage him, this and that, right? So I look over the left, you know, encouraging the audience to, to clap for him. And in a moment's notice, the guy actually grabbed the mic from me and oh. started singing. Like that confidence, it healed his fear. <laughs> Well, and I think it's precisely that, that, that right. unitive quality that you're right. talking about. He knew he was in the safe place where right. everyone was going to be called on to basically right. say their own voice. Right. And so that gave him the courage. And there's definitely something to be said about that. That sense of community, that unity, that that brings people to become the, the best version of themselves in that moment. Because in my spirit, I was going, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if this man went home tonight right. and in the same way that he felt courage in that moment to pick up the right. microphone, that he might go, I don't know, tell his wife that he loves her or right. tell his son. <laughs> You know, we just don't know what those possibilities no, or like go to work and do something that he wanted to, but he didn't have the courage yeah. to, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just get moved by those moments because right. I really am a believer that the small moments become mm -hmm. the great moments, you know? Well, it's and interesting I because I take care of small children and my little two-year-old that I nanny throws fits sometimes like all two-year-olds and I get her out of them through music. So it's funny nice. that you say that. And if I can kind of just ignore the fit and get her into the singing, you know, and kind of bring yes. that in, it changes the whole day. <laughs> so like I see it even with children, you know, like let's just change the mood, you know? Yeah. Um, and then sometimes when she'll get upset about something, she'll say, just sing whatever. And she'll tell me what I should sing, you know? Yeah. So it's beautiful to see how it kind of opens a, a heart, whether it be a grown man or a small child. And, um, you know, it kind of brings out that which is deepest within you. And it is healing. Now, tell me a little about this ministry that you do with kind of healing with music. Yeah, so... This kind of came about, uh, I don't want to say haphazardly, because yeah. I've always loved the, the spiritual, emotional, scientific qualities of what singing can do for people. Uh, but I think it became really evident when I was in New York City. This was probably 10 years ago when I, I first you know, came out to New York and I was doing more teaching. And, and taking on students and it was sort of by chance I think or maybe it wasn't you know every um what they say instance is a, a god instance kind right. of idea. exactly it's providential um, <laughs> maybe I don't know but the people that were coming to me for for singing um had particular things going on in my life um I was working with for instance a woman who had PTSD symptoms. Right. I was working with kids who were being bullied at school. Um, I had been working with veterans, you know, people right. that were dealing with more wellness concerns, I guess you could call it. Right. And so I was seeing the benefits of singing that was pretty much, you know, these people were, were right. having. And um, a couple of those were you know, one was sing well, one was sleeping better at night. Right. You know, she was doing oh, wow. in the evening. Found that she was sleeping better. She got up one time per night as opposed to three or four times per night. Right. So she had um, even more then of a peace. Up, <laughs> was more of a peace even that would stay with her, you know, to make her sleep. Right. And again, this was her experience, right? Right. I'm not right. Saying that like, all people who sing at nine o'clock no. are going to all have, <laughs> but can you right that this person was having? And uh, then I had, you know, like I said, I think the the child who was being bullied at school that was a pretty um, awesome observing kind of, um, you know, it, it was just really amazing. 
<laughs> to see how he came from not even being able to sing a note right. on the first. I mean, literally, it, it was right. he had a hard time singing. And right. by six months afterwards, he was singing his voice out. He even got the lead role in his school play, apparently. And right. so that courage and confidence and That's that confidence. Right. Wow. Yeah. So there were a lot of amazing things that were happening from that. So I, I went further into this research because I'm fascinated by science, you know, right. and I, I love John Paul II because he really, I think, speaks so beautifully about the integration of both faith and science and, you know, this kind of integral approach to the healing of the person. Right. Um, at the same time that I was reading that, I was also reading on different things that people can do for their their health on food or um, biome health or right. you know vagus nerve stimulation things like that. Just a whole gamut. I I was also hosting a show in New York City, and so I was talking with doctors, neuroscientists, uh, microbiologists, people, psychologists. I mean, you right. name it. And an IST, I was like talking to that person. Right. You know? <laughs> um, so I just decided, you know, and, and of course, a big part of this too was my, my own testimony. Um, I had a period of time in my life where I went through chronic stress mm -hmm. and was seeing what was happening on my own body. And I was connecting these dots as to, wow, how is it that... Um, you know, I was able to kind of take a certain path or route and, um, you know, come to a, a level of healing. Right. And, and how can I share that with other people, you know, because you end up meeting people who are like, oh, yeah, I feel this way or that way, or right. I feel mental, or I, you know, whatever it may be. So I wanted to share just what I knew or what I had done for myself. And I think the fact that I was an opera singer singing, you know, two to three hours a day, and looking at that quality of, is there something about opera singing that mm -hmm. has, you know, a, a medicinal effect, it will right. call it. But, um, so I started researching more on the specifics of music therapy, diaphragmatic breathing, like I said, right. all these like very scientific things. Um, and, and so I started this Sing for Wellness that integrated uh, you know, exercises that people mm -hmm. can do. Uh, just got done actually composing 50 some motivational leads, as I call them. Right. Um, do each morning. Uh -huh. um, give you an example, even though I, I have the, the backup track here. But, right. You know, even like a motivational mantra, like right. the unbelievable is achievable and you can snap right the right. believable wow. is achievable. now to me this is what i call kind of the despair disruptor yes because there yes. are those moments, right each right. day people can feel stressed out they right. might be dealing with a wellness issue they might be dealing with anxiety they might be dealing with depression mm -hmm. you know and they might be taking medicine what not? This is what I call sort of the additional tool that they can add right. to the toolbox. In those right. moments where they're feeling despair or they're feeling sadness or they're right. feeling mad, or, you know, what right. this mood. So it involves that as well. Um, but it's really, um, you know, series of exercises and singing mm -hmm. um, integrated in and can be done as a one-on-one -on -one with one of the brand ambassadors have on be delighted today.com that's the whole sort of empowerment organization that uses arts to people um or it can be done in a group setting like i said the the one where I did in a more concert right. setting so it both involves the listening of music as well as the engagement of music wow. so, yeah. it's so beautiful have you worked at all with autistic children it's interesting you bring that up <laughs> i've had that question Quite a bit in the last yeah, few months. <laughs> uh -huh. I can't say that I've worked specifically with uh -huh. autism, 
but that is an I area that's where you could help them. That's right. Yeah. As you're saying this, I'm thinking that could break them out of their, you know, tunnel. Yes. Well, and even, um, you know, there are lots of music research studies on the way music impacts stroke, uh, survival right. and, um, uh -huh. timers and whatnot. And I, a lot of it kind of goes back to that, um, you know, I read a book by a scientist and I apologize. I don't know his name off or I, I can't recall his name off the back. Right. I, <laughs> That's okay. I do that too. <laughs> yeah. But you know, idea that are, that we uh, perceive linguistics differently than we do music, that there are different areas of the brain. And so, okay. you know, it's like, um, like, I don't know if you saw this video that was circulating online about the, uh, the elderly woman who used to be a former ballet dancer and she all of a sudden started dancing the motions right of, uh swan was it swan lake i, think I don't she was, know but not she like lost she couldn't remember things but she remembered all of the moves for music or her dancing right yes. I, I did so see the that. Put the headphones on right. she all of a sudden was brought back to that time and and started right. performing I mean, it was so beautiful and touching, right. you know, right. um, people who are suffering from Alzheimer's can have right. a sense of enjoyment through music. It, oh, so it was like a tear jerk. I was weeping. Right. Behind. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. I could see where it really could be healing that way. I encourage you to like, look into the autism thing, because I know parents are always looking for different ways to reach their kids and to kind of bring them out, you know? And what you're saying totally goes along with that, you know, music therapy. Yeah, I, bringing that everyone has a voice, you know, right. that needs to be heard, you know, right. I think both vocally, internally, that feeling, right? right? Um, yeah. Right. Oh, so. that's so beautiful. Um, I actually had some questions. <laughs> I'm just asking you what's on my mind. <laughs> so what role has your faith played in your music? I just, you know, so you are very Catholic, I can tell. <laughs> um, kind of how, talk about that a little bit, because I think our listeners would particularly be interested in that. Uh, oh, my gosh. Well, I, <laughs> I know. guess there's a a, that's a big question. It is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, both on the performance end, the composing end, right. um, the training end. We'll <laughs> just talk involved. about it. <laughs> uh, in terms of um, performance, mm -hmm. I, I always a great prayer before mm -hmm. I go out on, you know, mm -hmm. I, I believe in sort of the St. Augustine approach to sing right. is to pray twice. Right. Although I question. Someone said, did St. Augustine really say that? I don't know. <laughs> so, no, I wondered that too, because I, I don't know where it would be from, but <laughs> it is a beautiful quote. <laughs> well, if anything, like, I still love that I that to sing is to pray twice because right. um, your voice is singing and, and giving praise. And even uh, Psalm 47, I believe, um, is about singing praise to God, right? There's so right. much about found in biblical scripture as as to why we should and and, and we should we should sing sing for each other it's clean it's active measure um and, and in, in an interesting way i felt that singing was a was a physical protection measure actually for my right. own body um right. which i can get into later but that goes behind all the science of how um you know, singing can stimulate the vagus nerve. And when you look at um, person who maybe have a speech state, for whatever reason, um, like I said, he has depression and anxiety um, where cortisol is running through the system at probably higher rates. And, and again, I'm saying that from more of a testimony uh, right. viewpoint, but when you sing, you're literally um, oxygenating the cells uh, through your, your blood. I mean, even the Frankfurt University, um, you know, did a study on how immunoglobulin A increased uh, in the bloodstream upon singing and rehearsal. So to me, like when I when I read the science, it actually reveals what what God already said, <laughs> you know, right. again, the measure the the singing to each other, the giving thanks, the gratitude right. um, to be in a state of joy to um, 
you know, so I, I try to, um, before I go out on a performance stage, I think of people who I asked, you know, if they want me to pray for someone right. or some, some intention. Right. And I try to offer my songs to oh. those people. Um, well, please include also. me. <laughs> Next Bill, performance. <laughs> I want some of that God. prayer. It's twice <laughs> over. Right? To sing is to pray twice. <laughs> oh, very good. I will. I will be with you on my next <laughs> song performance. That's um, so beautiful. Yeah. So you know, so it's I, literally I, a prayer for you. You are literally yeah. praying as you're singing. Yes, and I'm a big believer in intercessory prayer. So mm -hmm. you know what is happening here can go impact, um, you know, other right. people. And of course I, I believe that from a spiritual aspect as I do a, um, a scientific one, right. um, you know, I just read in a, actually, uh, a, a book on prayer that, um, there were people that were actually doing science studies on prayer. Now I, you know, I just kind of read these things a little more loosely because right. I pray, want to pray, but right. you know, you even look at, physics the idea of like cells that are you know one place they resonate the same mm -hmm. in another place like right. just that not but again like who created that science like god right. created the, the the stars and the plant you know so right. it all goes back to this, this revelation of what what right. god has created Come so Yes. So yes, I believe that uh, singing is prayer. And, you know, there are people who I consistently pray for, I pray for my family, you know, my loved ones. Um, you know, the and people uh, you serve, I'm sure, you know, if you're teaching somebody struggling with PTSD, you're probably thinking about them and praying for them too, as you're doing other things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think you know, one scripture passage uh, that resonates as, right. as I, I was going to ask you if you had a favorite. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, even just the when God breathed on his people, you know, this idea of breath and, and right. bringing life people that I think if singers uh, in the arts and entertainment field think of that. Um, you know, not that they are God, <laughs> but that oh they God are. A, uses, we're part of the body of Christ. He does use us in that way. Yeah, yes, that that we are instruments that yes. to go out and serve and and to literally breathe and bring life into another right. person's when it's down. You know, and I I just love that. That's so beautiful. It just shows us interconnectedness of our. So. Um, that, that's about, if somebody was really sick and you went in that room and just sang, they couldn't help but feel better. So you're breathing healing and life into them. Like imagine if in every cancer ward, there was a music missionary who would just go into a room where they're depressed or where they're in pain. And like, I believe that beauty does that to people. Why do you send flowers? Why, you know, well, what if you had somebody singing, you know? Yeah. Um, I could totally see where you are that instrument of God's love and his life and his breath, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, during COVID mm -hmm. pandemic, um, this was an offering that we had for those people in hospitals and clinics and, and what I hope to further engage down the road in right. bringing, uh, singing ambassadors to, uh, mm -hmm. clinics and right. that are struggling with addiction or, or anyone literally right. because right. is really for everyone. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Even the smallest whisper that can come right. from a voice that may may not be able to sing in the way that you know a pop singer on on the radio yeah. could sing they still have that voice in them that can be heard and acknowledged and affirmed and loved so yeah so as far as biblical scripture i think that seems to resonate a lot uh with me i'm and then the psalms 47 um 
and I, I have plenty of more, but I, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, you're limited in time, right? <laughs> yeah. So, well, you know, I, one thing I'll mention that has to do with that is when I was in the orphanages in Africa, we had so many babies and you couldn't touch, like babies need touch. And I couldn't hold 20 babies by myself, but I learned very quickly that my voice could touch all of them. So I would go in the room and I would start singing and the other caretakers were blown away at their response. And as soon as those babies saw me come in and they were between newborn to about 10 or 11 months, they'd start yes. like singing. They'd be, you know, ah, and they would see me and, they would, <laughs> and it would quiet them. And I, you know, I, I really saw that um, how voice can be touch, you know, and, and comfort them when my arms, I just physically couldn't do it. And you saw such um, an uplifting of the spirit there. You know, the African people are so beautiful in their song. You know, they sing yeah. all the time. They sing working. They sing, you know, everything they do is a song. That's one gift of the Africans. So they appreciated that. And um, it was just so beautiful. And so I, I see what you're saying in that kind of experience, how these little guys just perked right up to life, you know? Yep. From, and it didn't yep. matter, even if I was singing in another language than everybody else was speaking in, it doesn't matter, you yes. know? <laughs> Gosh, that reminds me. Now, it wasn't a baby I sang uh -huh. for, but uh, back in before... I launched into New York City. I sang at an Italian restaurant uh -huh. and I tabled the table singing. This was my, my job to get me through college. Oh, wow. And I went to one table and had about eight people. They were celebrating a birthday. And one of the kids at the table said, Can you break glass? You know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I had this idea in my head. I was like, I'm going to see if the cook can just throw down a plate right when I hit the high note. You oh, know? right. <laughs> and, oh, I'm singing the birthday song, you know, da 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 da, da. Right. Then the high note comes, the plate goes down, and this kid went from a smiling face to almost a deadpan, like, couldn't believe what happened. <laughs> um, but that surprise nature, right? right? Or that sense of curiosity. Right. Young kids. How do you do that? Or how does that voice, how do you, how do you resonate that, that tone so high right. or, or even just the, but yes, babies looking at how they react to, to music and the, right. just so precious. Oh, I, it's, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Now we're talking about your faith. Are there any saints that you particularly like help you in your music ministry? Yeah, so definitely Pope John Paul II. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm hundred percent Polish, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> he is in his book that he wrote, Love and Responsibility, mm -hmm. was so amazing. I that changed my life <laughs> in really? many ways. Wow. Read it, yeah. In my late twenties. I would say you know, in talking about responsibility, right? Like, right. I think that artists have such a responsibility in, in what comes up our mouths or what goes on the, you know, the canvas no, or right. molded. Right. Um, and, you know, this is sometimes, I think, argued even in, you know, movies. Like, well, right. how about showing a movie that has violence? Is that doing what, you know? <laughs> right, right. I'm not here to argue whether that is no, you know, right correct or not the correct thing to do. But ultimately, even in showing a suffering moment, we can still find um, the the beauty that may come out of why the suffering moment could be taking right. place. You know? Right. Um, or if I'm making sense. I just that um, it can reveal something, you know. Right. Um, right. So it it uh your your question was about um saints but you're talking about Pope this, John Paul II oh, right John Paul II yes so his when he talked about you know what love is and just that responsibility factor that's in there i thought about that a lot in my my work as an artist because 
you know, there were many times where I just grappled with, um, you know, like, should I say, should I say this in my lyrics? Should I, uh, you know, even, even like, should I wear this on stage? You know, right. how right. presenting themselves, you know, if, if, if our bodies are the temple of, of the Holy right. spirit, like how presenting myself in a way that is right. showing love to my audience and that, or no, conversely, how that audience shows love back. Right. So, um, so th those were always very big um, questions for me, especially in my early twenties right. in making decisions that, you know, how do I love show love to my audience through right. what I say, what I sing on stage, my lyrics, how I present myself. Um, so yeah, it's hard. I, I would say John Paul too, it uh, just is amazing. And, and also too, his level of forgiveness, you know, of course, I'm thinking back to um, the story of him uh, meeting the very person in the, the prison who tried to assassinate him. And, and I just look at him always in awe, you know, right. it's like, wow. And then, like okay, that's this is love. The, that's <laughs> humble love. <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. And I ask myself, gosh, could I do that? You know? And but I think that brings the question to like even what what is the purpose of of our arts, you know? Uh when someone listens to my music, is this going to make a person go back and do something of positive um nature to the people right. around them? I mean, if somebody told me wow, Andrea, I listened to this song of yours and I was so moved and, you know, I went and I apologized to my friend for right. blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, if they said that, I would just be so touched because... You're like, I succeeded. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, oh, beautiful, you know? Right. And so I, I think, yeah, secondarily, like purpose, you know, what is the purpose of an artist? Um, mm -hmm. That is always a question that I, I try to you know, keep asking myself, like, am I, am, is what I'm doing in this moment, I'm bringing a sense of purpose um, right. in, in my own mission and also uh, for people who are listening to the music or, right. or listening to whatever thing I'm doing on the stage, so. And I think John Paul II was such a brilliant saint in that, you know, he was in theater, but he wrote like a letter to artists and like, yes, he was okay. very much in that. And he understood, like you were saying about science, like he met with scientists and he was yes. very much like integrated. And I think like what you're describing would be like his ideal, you know, to be yes. an instrument of, you know, God, the great artist, you know, that yes. we're all like, our gifts are only a reflection of his like, imagine the what? lullaby God the Father sings at night, you know? Oh. you know, in heaven, it will, you know, those choirs of angels, we're just allowed a little of that. And you have been blessed with the gift to really, like, give people a window into that, you know, um, yeah. what, what heaven will, because I think heaven is full of music, <laughs> you know, glorious music. <laughs> so I think and playing violins and the tuba and trumpets and <laughs> right right um, yes yes choir of angels you know you talk about other saints um i also have a, a love for padre pio uh -huh. um i'm i'm fascinated by by him um you know i i have to say i recently back in november of uh, uh -huh. 2020 i traveled cross country and different uh shrines and holy spots of the way for a uh, tv pilot that I, I hope to get distribution for called uh, at least working title eat pray sing and i stopped at the Dimfna shrine because this is um saint dimphna is sort of the i guess saint that people look to are struggling say right. with uh mental illness or um, to wellness concerns. So I wanted to stop there because I wanted to pray for the people who I know who you know, struggling is there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I've uh, have come to just uh, I don't know as much about St. Dimna, but just that um, in reading, you know, the little that I do know about uh, her and yeah, there's so many amazing saints along the way, but I have to say, you know, uh, John Paul II, and mm -hmm. then uh, I guess, you know, I should put in there too, though, like Fulton Sheen. Um, now, I don't know where he's at in the sainthood. I thought there there was supposed to be. He was about to be beatified or canonized, and then they like stopped it. I don't know, there's controversy. He's a holy man. <laughs> I think he's still a servant of God, but a lot of my writing I've taken from him. I think he's a very holy man of God. Yes, and I have to say, uh, probably when I was 28, my Friday nights were listening to Fulton Sheen videos. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I was just really awestruck by his his intellect and just... Um, yeah, amazing. He's almost He's theatrical. Amazing. You know, his presentation yeah. was uh, was definitely of the arts. You know, yeah, definitely. So I kind of I put him in the the pile of the, I <laughs> the would things do. that I. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I really loved he. I think he was one of the first to get an Emmy, if I recall, for his show "Life's yeah, maybe. Um, Worth Living." Life's worth. Yeah. Yes. So those, I think the videos that were online uh -huh. were uh, snapshots, I think, from, right. from that show. Correct. So, right. uh, yeah, I found his wisdom to just be phenomenal. Incredible. Yes. You know, he wrote one of my favorite books on Mary, which is The World's First Love. I don't know if you've ever oh. read it. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually reading it now. <laughs> yes, the world's first love. And, you know, he was in love with Our Lady. And obviously, you are too. I mean, I guess we should get to your rosary, kind of what you wanted to do. <laughs> we can kind of go into that. You know, um, who is Mary to you? And what do you feel her calling you to do? Do you want to kind of just share some of that? Really interesting because. Um, so I should mention, when I moved to New York City, um, my faith journey was a little different at that time. Um, I was not going to daily mass, um, but I, I had a, a, a curiosity at one point, you know, um, sitting before, you know, being in adoration was not something that I had done a lot of uh, in my early 20s. So New York City is, um, can be very challenging just uh, for an art, mm -hmm. just in the sense of maneuvering the city. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got high rent costs and things like that, you know, right. it's just uh, right. it very challenging times. You know? right. So I would say my reasoning at that time was like, oh gosh, I'm stressed out. Here's a church here. I'm going to go walk. Okay. Right. So that's a real you know, right. that's just, I was feeling. So um, I went to the back of the, the adoration chapel and I just sat in silence for like 10 minutes. Uh -huh. And then that was it. Right. And then I came out, right? Okay. So then you're like, wow, that's amazing. I'm going to go do it again. Right. <laughs> and like the 10 minutes becomes 20 minutes, becomes a half right. hour. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, you know where I'm going with this, right? right. So, uh, so 20 minutes becomes 30 minutes, 30 minutes from 40 an hour. And then, you know, then you're, then you're observing, right? And you're seeing people do the rosary or praying or even asking mm -hmm. questions. You know? And so it wasn't until I went to adoration that I started doing the rosary. Uh -huh. And so um, I felt that the rosary... Uh, for me anyway, had a real protective quality. Um, so Mary to me has been like the protective mother, you know, right. Right. um, I guess that's the way that I, I, you that's know, who she is. That's why <laughs> Yeah, no. I think that's just the nature of our mama. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but it's interesting because I'm trying to put my mindset back during that time when, it was just so um, 
that sense of curiosity, you know, that leads you to kind of the, to the next thing. Um, and I, I would just encourage if anybody has a sense of curiosity, keep going with oh, right. it, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so now, um, you know, I do the rosary um, with my mother, uh, you know, or with uh, prayer groups, um, mm-hmm. on, especially during COVID, you know, it was really mm-hmm. hard when churches weren't open. Um, but yes, it, the rosary has played a very powerful role in all of this. And I, I desire to uh, do a, a new musical setting, right. not musical sense of theatrical theater um, right but and not changing the prayer at all <laughs> no I can see just a new musical setting for the rosary I get it <laughs> yeah uh, so that has been on my heart for a very long time probably uh-huh. good four or five years and so now I've been making some sketches on how to go deeper in that because um, you know I think just like anything when you prepare a role for, for an opera or, or prepare a role for a character in a movie, you learn about the character, you learn about, um, you know, just everything and anything. And so for me, like diving in and reading more about Mary, like through right. that book, you know? Right. Like, that was an amazing book. <laughs> right. Actually, I think I read that book. I thought I was reading it. But yes, when you said, right. uh, Mary's first love. Um, right, the world's like, first love. Mary, first, right? Because Mary is the world's first love. You know. Yes. So I thoroughly enjoyed the book, and I actually didn't know what type of book I was going to read. You know, you kind of ha- think that it's going to be about this or that or whatever. Right. Again, the chain <laughs> never right. surprises. Me no. Because no. Really- so I uh, really walked away with just this, I don't know, more p- profound knowledge of, of Mary. So, um, and I, and I hope to read more about, you know, her and as I develop the music and get inspired by melodies might come into play, a voice will be used. Right. Um, but I just want something uh, for people, you know, to, to be able to, when they're going on their walk, yeah. they can. Flip it on, right? Do you want to do um, all four decades, like all the different um, mysteries, and do you want them to kind of be different or kind of similar? Kind of what's, or do you not know yet? Well, I think if I, yeah, I I don't know yet, but yes, I would love to do all the the mysteries, and and also with that, I'd love to do a a cinema cinematic sort of display of sorts also so that people if they just want to listen um they can listen and if they want to see a more visual representation they can Um, but 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 most importantly to really dive deep into the the prayer uh, first and foremost because i think like anything it can also be easy to um you know divert attention away from things if it's not right. done in good Correct. Um, music should serve the prayer right right exactly I get that. yeah i i've changed a little bit of my opinion on even music in church and mm-hmm. and having like cantors in the front versus you know in right. the back or right. um sometimes can distract from you know the the eucharist and right. what like is before a concert but you want exactly. beautiful music, but it's yes. to lift you up to Jesus and not to, you know, it's not a stage. And it's, you know, it's beautiful right. to hear you as a musician say that, because I think it might be difficult for musicians to understand that sometimes, you know, um, <laughs> it's like they're used to being yeah. center stage, <laughs> but there it's almost like the more you disappear, then the more you're you're serving the purpose, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely agree. With people that. can yeah. get lost and like you carry them, but then to for, almost forget about the music because the music's so beautiful and to remember yeah. that, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and, 
and that's yes i agree with you 100 there's so many distractions in life right you know right, even totally <laughs> on you know even during mass you know, I people, know. People, <laughs> and again no no judgment like i know but it's just not right distractions distractions right. everywhere so even in some ways, like having a bunch of musicians up on the right side right. could be a distraction. Right. Um, so yes, enhancing what the purpose of the mass is there, I think is really important. So no, that is beautiful. Is there <laughs> like, um, like a particular fruit that you wish to give to people through this rosary? Like oh, is there boy. something that you want them to kind of take away, like specifically, or just kind of be an instrument of the Holy Spirit? Either is fine. It's not like a right answer. I just wondered, is there something like yeah. some people do something and they're like, I'm supposed to give joy. And so, you know, <laughs> and then some people are a little bit more open-ended. Like, is there something that you feel is like a passion that you want people to walk away from this with or not necessarily? Yeah, well, certainly joy. It's interesting. I think, I think what instinctually came to my mind was the passage that those who weep will be comforted. Oh, that's so I, think, I know that this sounds a little weird, but I feel like we need more tears. <laughs> no, I agree. I, that I agree. I was actually speaking with my nieces this morning about that because people get so fake in the world, like the whole world is like social media or something that like, <laughs> they don't know how to deal with somebody's actual pain. Like if you're friends with someone, they're going to cry sometimes, or they're going to struggle or they'll be happy. But like that reality and humanness is really lost. And we're talking about their college campus, but I think it's true in society. So what you're saying actually matches our coffee conversation this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that so then maybe the the answer to that question is that mary would bring a sense of vulnerability to yes. people because in that vulnerability um changes are are made um right. and i mean at the, the the minute level as i do the a magnitude level i mean you think about the conversations that could be had in a family if right. there are person to be vulnerable right you know say gosh, I feel hurt by this, or I feel hurt by, you know, whatever it is. Right. We were talking um, about it. Just to admit it and say it and love anyway. Yes. Like, I come from yes. a big family. Big families are messy and real and, you know, <laughs> and that's the way relationships are supposed to be. They're human, yeah. right? Like, we feel things. Well, <laughs> you wonder how that could... Um, pave the way for say, you know, big organizations or companies, you know, mm -hmm. if there's vulnerability there, you know, let's talk about, um, you know, I mean, I'm not suggesting having a whole weep fest. At no, <laughs> I, I actually did a whole <laughs> podcast on tears, on the so, gift yeah. of tears. And, you know, in the Eastern church, yes. it's considered a gift of the Holy Spirit when you yes. weep in prayer. So I get that. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, even when you think about persons who might struggle with, say, anxiety or depression or PTSD or or, or just a person who's struggling through a moment in life, right. like, sick, you know, tears right. weep, cause all, it's all, the stress is leaving the body. And, right. and <laughs> in trauma... Um, I'm a big believer that it, it can dwell in the cell, you know, right. and so we're shedding this, this, this toxin out of the right. cell, rejuvenating it with oxygen, right. with just again, life, right. Mary's right. breathing life into us. So right. I, I think for me, if, if I can try to, you know, create that musical setting, right. that will help people be brought to so that they can be vulnerable then I think that that would be a beautiful beautiful thing. and you know people I think are willing to be vulnerable when they feel love yep. so your music and the prayer is giving that like secure atmosphere of love so people yeah. can you know if you're bringing you know beautiful rosary it's like bringing them to our lady and then they're safe 
and then they can break down a little bit and then yeah. she can rebuild, you know, in a better way. Yeah. So I can see it being very beautiful. Yeah. Well, let's pray. I know. <laughs> Is there any, well, at that point, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to add or tell the uh, listening audience? Do you want to sing something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, to be honest, I wasn't even prepared to, to sing today. Only talk. Isn't that funny? I know. And I, that's why I'm not asking if you don't want. <laughs> but if you have something on your heart, you're more than oh, welcome to oh. <laughs> share it. I always, well, hey, listen, if your audience wants to keep me in their prayers, I would be grateful for I that. Will. Um, I'd also say if you want to hear any music, you know, certainly go on YouTube. Um, uh -huh. I have websites out there. One's my, my artist site, Andrea hyphen uh -huh. Lynn, dot com, And the other one is, uh, be delighted today.com. Right. So, um, you know, the be delighted today is a, a bigger initiative. Um, you know, with the sing for wellness and right. also, um, actually developing a therapeutic device. So this has been a big, uh, right. undertaking and what I can say about it, at least now is that, um, it encompasses both the, uh, I guess the scientific and the artistic. Right. right. I would be grateful for those, those prayers. Um, but yeah, if they want to come and join the mailing list and be a part of something to really move, uh, the hearts of people across this nation, gosh, I would be so blessed to, to have them on board so they can go. Well, thank you for providing that. I think it's something that can really touch people and there's a need, you know, we don't, it's something kind of new. So, yeah. you know, yeah. thank you for, I mean, that takes a lot of your work, you know, but I can't imagine the number of hearts that you can, you can touch and kind of lift up, you know? Yeah. Well, that is the hope, right? Right. <laughs> Still hope, hope and joy. Oh, wonderful. Well, let's end with a prayer. Sure. Sweet Jesus, we ask you to bless Andrea. We ask you to place your hands upon her and to pour out your everlasting love on her and on her ministry on all of the people that you will bring to be touched by her work. We ask for you to intercede for her, especially in this work of honoring your mother through a rosary, a musical rosary. We ask you to bring her um, the people that can help her, the funding that she needs, and the audience that you've prepared to be touched by this work. And we thank you for her life. We thank you for her work. And we ask you to continue to just exponentially increase the grace that she has to serve you. And we ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. So, amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> thank you, Mary, so much for having me, really. Well, oh. thank you for coming. It's such a, like, the hour went by so quickly because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot we could talk about. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. So <laughs> wonderful. And we will be praying for you. I promise. Oh, thanks so much, Mary. Gosh, have a blessed day. Okay. Thank you too. God okay. be with you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.